Tanya, will you be able to look at uh, any questions that come in? Yes, I'm monitoring the fee. Cool, okay, great. All right, it is noon. Um, good afternoon, everybody, welcome. Uh, so glad you can join this uh, monthly discussion. Um, this is our Grow Business 911 speaker series. Um, we've been having these conversations now for about a year. Uh, third Thursday of every month, we have a wonderful speaker lined up with us today. Uh, we welcome you. My name is Rashid Mahalha. I am the GROW Economic Advisor. Uh, GROW stands for Growth in the Regional Ozarks. We have, uh, we have about a half a dozen, 10 communities in central southern Missouri that are working with us uh, to help uh, create pathways for economic and community sustainability. And so we're excited uh, to have many of these communities participate in the conversation. Uh, today's conversation wouldn't be possible without the leadership, the guidance of our local chambers. And so today, uh, our conversation is being relayed, syndicated across five different local chambers Facebook pages. Uh, so you can hopefully uh, can join or you're, or you're joining us uh, on one of the many or, uh, sites. Uh, so we have Eldon. Uh, that's uh, their chamber is part of this Aaron Rohr and the team there at the chamber. We have the Herman uh, Missouri chamber with Melissa Lensing. We thank her. Uh, Aurora with Shannon Walker. Um, we're being telecasted there. We have Pam Dudley in Mount Vernon and Tanya Watson in Buffalo who are the various chambers that are part of the program right now and other members as well that will be joining us. So so you want to thank all of our local chambers. Um, before we get into today's topic, one more item we wanted to highlight, as you can see on your screen, we have a nice series of conversations lined up related to coping with COVID. Uh, obviously, COVID-19 is creating havoc in our local economies. Many of our businesses are trying to figure out how to navigate these turbulent times. So we've got these series of conversations that are hopefully helpful to you. Um, next, our next conversation, actually we've got uh, a, uh, an, uh, an additional co conversation that's scheduled in addition to next month's schedule, which is going to focus on legal matters. We actually have another topic that we're trying to organize for tomorrow, which is this um, conversation, which is really focusing on the PPP loans. It was recently announced by the federal government that there's still about 130 billion B billion dollars left in the PPP loans slash grant opportunity to the Small Business Administration. We're finding there's a lot of small businesses who have misunderstanding about what these loans entail. So hopefully you can join us. Hopefully on our end, we'll be able to coordinate all the logistics, but we're hoping to invite a banker and the local business that's been able to take advantage of the program. So that will be happening tomorrow. Uh, Friday, June 19th at noon. Um, so these are the conversations that we're hoping can help our small local businesses. If you're joining us today, or even if you're watching a recording, we also want to invite you to give us your feedback. We, we, we seek your feedback to make our programming as impactful and effective as possible. So please take a moment uh, to fill the survey out. It, it won't take more than two minutes and your thoughts and feedback really help us improve our programming. One more item we wanted to quickly highlight before we'll jump into today's topic is, one second. We have a site for grow businesses, uh, businesses in our grow community, what's called, that's called business911.org. You can click on Grow Missouri and you can find a list of local support options for you. And specifically, we just wanted to hi highlight this particular button, the educational series. If you click on that, you will be able to see all of our past recordings uh, and upcoming events. Uh, so if there's any of these topics that are of interest to you, uh, we certainly encourage you to check those out on business911.org. All right. So having said all that, I'd like to now introduce our speaker. Uh, we have a wonderful, um, very experienced speaker who's joined us today. 
Uh, Justin Patterson, who is a CPA, uh, he now has his own uh, financial um, management firm um, and uh, an accounting firm that can help our local businesses. He's got a vast array of experiences. He's, he's been a CFO at a variety of organizations and a CPA um, and, and has an array of experiences that can help us understand what are the different products um, that are out there, the different uh, options out there, federal program options that are out there. And quite often, again, for our small business owners, you know, one, two, five person companies, uh, we're so busy running the business that we don't have a good grasp of all the options that are out there. And I just, the one point I would really highlight as we get into this conversation is please, please take a moment to understand what's there because there are some wonderful, easy to navigate options out there for you. Um, and we are seeing a pattern where our businesses are not leveraging the opportunity. So we're so thankful to have Justin with us. Justin, without further ado, uh, we'll, we'll turn the baton to you, sir. Welcome. All right, thank you for having me, guys. Um, again, my name is Justin Patterson. I am a CPA, uh, been practicing for 17 years. Um, been in public practice for about 14 of those years. Uh, there was about three years where I served as a chief financial officer uh, for a couple large companies in Springfield. Um, about a year and a half ago, I broke out on my own and, and decided to get back into the business of helping small businesses and individuals um, through, a, through opening my, my CPA firm, Gray Oak Financial. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I, I guess when, when we look at, at all of the options that are out there for a lot of small businesses, uh, you don't really know what, what all is out there available to you. Uh, a lot of people think that there's stuff that isn't available to you that, that might be available to you. And so uh, today what I would like to go through is, is I'd like to talk about uh, the five different types of assistance that are uh, available to small business owners uh, through, through the SBA and through, through private lending. Uh, and so uh, the first one um, is called the EIDL program, the e um, Economic Income Disaster Loan Program. Uh, that is available to uh, any small business owner uh, that was uh, in, in business in 2019 and was then in operation for the first um, three months of 2020. And um, that program is one where it is a, a loan, an SBA loan. It is available, uh, let's see, at a 30-year term at a 3.75% interest rate. It, uh, let's see, they, the way they calculate that loan is, is they look at your annual revenue for 2019, then they will uh, multiply that by five, and you can receive up to five times your annual revenue that you had in 2019. Uh, again, it will be in the form of a loan uh, over 30 years at a 3.75% interest rate. Um, does not guarantee that you're going to get five times that value. Uh, it, I've seen it as low as, as half of one year. Um, so if you, if you had $100,000 in revenue in, in 2019, uh, they will approve you for 50,000. Um, they have been approving those uh, limits based on the risk that they deem your business uh, is at in relation to the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, to apply for that program, uh, you can go to the SBA.gov website and uh, there, are, there are ways that you can be directed through that. Uh, the first thing is just the very, very top of that website, there's a big yellow banner that says, you know, uh, click here for uh, different loan options related to the COVID-19 disaster. Um, the second program that is out there uh, that I would just briefly want to talk about is the EIDL Loan Advance Program. Uh, that is a program where they will loan a business up to $10,000 quickly. Uh, it is based on $1,000 per employee of the business um, up to 10 employees. So $10,000, you get it quickly. And it is, is, a, is a loan that will be converted into a grant that does not have to be paid back. 
So uh, again, I encourage you that this is a program that uh, if you have employees, including yourself, um, and you need a quick, quick access to up to $10,000, uh, again, go to the sba.gov website, click on the big yellow banner at the top, and it will direct you to where to go uh, to find that program. Uh, the third option is the PPP loan program. Um, that has the see, Paycheck Protection Program. Um, and it is one where uh, businesses are able to uh, go through an independent lender, not through the SBA itself, uh, though it is associated with the SBA. Uh, you, you would go to your, your local lender, uh, a banker, and um, you apply through them uh, with a uh, just a normal loan application. It's actually very simple. It's about three-page application. Uh, you fill out. You give it some inf give them some information about your business. Uh, they want to know the revenue that you had last year, the income, uh, the expenses, and, and the income related to that. Uh, and then they will take that number, uh, that that ending net income number. Uh, and let's say again, we'll use a hundred thousand dollars again. If, if you had a hundred thousand dollars in, in net income in 2019, they will take that number, uh, divide it by 12, and then multiply it by two and a half, and that is the amount that they will loan you. Uh, now, this is the program that if you've been hearing about uh, people saying I'm, I'm getting this uh, this money that is going to be forgiven by the government, that's this program. Um, they will uh, take that that two and a half. Uh, times your monthly income and uh, you have eight weeks well you did have eight weeks to spend that money uh, and if you spent it all in the eight weeks on uh, payroll expenses uh, uh, let's see payroll expenses um, uh, overhead costs like rent uh, uh, more if you, if you own a building your mortgage note payment um, utilities things like that they will, they will, as long as you spend it on those items, they will forgive uh, that, uh, that, that loan. Uh, and, it, and you did have eight weeks to spend that money. Uh, now, as things are, are constantly changing in this environment, um, they are now extending that. Um, and, and we don't know how long they're going to uh, allow you to spend that money. But it will, I mean, conceivably add four weeks, eight weeks. We, we don't really know. But, um, but if you calculated that, that amount on a on a ten week uh, basis, uh, which is two and a half months, um, then you should have enough time to spend that money and, and, and spend it all. And if you spend it all on these qualifying expenses, uh, the, the SBA will forgive that loan, and you don't have to pay it back. Uh, and I believe I, earlier I was talking about the, the it was based on the income of the business. It's actually based. I, I apologize. That, that that's based on the uh, the payroll. It's based on payroll expenses of the business uh, over over an annual period, um, and so for a, like a Schedule C empl uh, employee, so someone who's an independent contractor who doesn't have uh, a partnership or a, an S corp, um, that's where it comes into the net income of the business. Um, so. Um, it's a very good program that allows you to get a lot of uh, relief uh, during these uh, crazy times. So um, there are a lot of people that think that they don't qualify for the PPP loan. Um, again, self-employed individuals, maybe you just get a 1099. Um, they, they thought I'm not a, I'm not a real business. I don't get to uh, participate in that program. Um, I would say you potentially have been misinformed. Um, and I would love to, to talk to you about that or, or reach out to your trusted advisor. Um, and see if maybe they can guide you uh, in the right direction there uh, because there are a lot of people that do qualify that that, that don't realize it um, the the fourth uh, program that I want to talk about is the uh, SBA Express bridge loan program uh, and that is it's a, it's a small program for uh, if, if you have applied for that the first program we talked about the EIDL uh, loan program and you're waiting for your approval and, and, and it has been taking months uh, in, in some cases for people to get approved for that program. Um, if you're waiting and, and you, you need money uh, to help your business sustain, uh, you can reach out to the SBA through their website and apply for the SBA Express Bridge Loan Program where they can quickly uh, expedite this process and get you up to $25,000 uh, in, in loan funds. 
uh, very quickly. Um, and that, that will then come off of the final uh, EIDL loan that you receive. Um, so it's not any additional funding, but it is quick access to funding you would be expected to get later. Um, the fifth program is the SBA Debt Relief Program. And that is a program um, where if you already have a relationship with SBA, you already have a loan with SBA, you can reach out to the SBA and uh, they will actually make six months of payments on your SBA loan for you so that you, you basically get six months of, of free payments. Um, now, there are some caveats to that. Uh, if you're already in a loan deferment program with them, you need to contact them and, and work through those um, technicalities there. But, uh, but yeah, for, for most SBA participants, uh, you can get six months uh, paid on your SBA loan for you. Um, so uh, again, re rehashing those five programs, um, the EIDL loan, it is a 30-year uh, loan at 3.75% uh, based on the annual revenue that you generated in 2019. The EIDL loan advance program, where you're able to get up to $10,000 advanced to your business, that's uh, $1,000 per employee. It is, uh, it, while it is initially called a loan, it is going to be converted to a grant that will be uh, forgiven. And uh, the third option is the, uh, the PPP program, where you can uh, receive two and a half months of your payroll costs for your business uh, funded to you in a loan that if you spend the, the loan proceeds on your uh, payroll and rent, utilities, mortgage uh, notes, if you spend the money on that, it will be forgiven uh, by the SBA. You have the SBA Express Bridge Loan Program that allows you to, uh, if, you, if your EIDL loan is taking a while to get processed, you can get quick access to up to $25,000. And finally, the SBA Debt Relief Program that uh, if you already have an SBA loan in process, and it cannot be an EIDL loan, uh, it has to be a, uh, a traditional SBA loan, uh, you can get up to six months paid for by the SBA itself. So um, those are the, the programs that for me as a CPA, I want all my clients, potential clients to know that are out there. I want you to know what's available to you so you can take advantage of it if you need it or want it. Um, some additional thoughts I had just on uh, helping to navigate through these uh, times uh, would be, uh, I just had three quick points, uh, uh, get thin. You know, um, if, if your business is struggling during this time, um, find a way to get thin. Uh, find ways to cut expenses, cut costs uh, as reasonably as possible. Um, you want to uh, work with, again, your trusted advisors to uh, find ways to do that. Um, I would say be shrewd in your decision making. Uh, second point, be shrewd. Um, you know, think twice before you make a decision. Um, be careful in what you do. We don't know what's happening tomorrow, let alone the next week or the next month. So, so again, get with your team of people, the people you trust, uh, when you're making, you know, deciding to make these decisions. Um, and, and third, uh, be creative. Um, there are a lot of ways we can look to uh, cut costs, uh, get with, you know, your, your CPA, uh, uh, reach out to vendors uh, to try to uh, arrange terms, um, get with your insurance agents to say, hey, you know, maybe it's time to, to requote some stuff. Um, just find ways to uh, be creative. So, um, and lastly, I just want to leave you with, with my information. Um, you know, uh, my name is Justin Patterson. Again, I'm a CPA uh, based out of Mount Vernon. I have offices in uh, Neosho, in Springfield, and in Mount Vernon. Um, work with a lot of small businesses that uh, have gone through these programs. We've got them qualified. We've got them their funding. And uh, would love to sit down and, and, and talk with any of you that, that might need some assistance. Um, if you need to reach out to me, my, my phone number at the office is 417-224-2525. Uh, if you're in Mount Vernon, uh, my office is right across from the post office downtown. And uh, additionally, if you, if you want to reach out via email, 
my email address is jpatterson at grayoakfinancial.com. Uh, gray is spelled with an E. And so uh, at this point, you know, I, I, I've been fairly generic, I guess, maybe on these topics and would love to open it up to any questions that might be out there. Thank you, Justin. That was, uh, that was really great and concise information. Really appreciate that. We've been monitoring the Facebook sites and I haven't seen a lot of questions come in. Uh, let me open it up to the chamber leaders first. Um, Tanya, I noticed Tanya's on, Herman, um, we have Melissa on. Uh, any, um, any questions so far from anyone on the call? As, we, as we're pulling them in, let me, let me just throw uh, some couple scenarios out there, um, just because I, this sounds great. And, and let's start with the, with the areas that, that, that are potentially the, the most attractive to our businesses, the two grant opportunities. So the loan uh, advance program, that sounds like uh, you can get $1,000 per employee. Is that right? Yes, and that includes self-employed individuals. In, in any of this process, um, always consider yourself as an employee. And so, sure. uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if it's just you, you know, in, in my case, I am a self-employed individual, one employee, myself. I can apply for that EIDL loan advance and receive $1,000 grant money that will be forgiven. And, and the application process for that, you go to the SBA website, uh, and I was just perusing the SBA website. It, uh, there's a lot of content there. Uh, would you mind, um, after this call, could you, could you maybe email me the link to the specific place where that application sits and we can send it out to all the chamber members? Yeah, absolutely. And so for the application, sounds like it's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward application online that you fill out some basic information and then what's the, how does it work? They just mail you a check and there it is, you're done? So the SBA will put a, uh, a representative in touch with you. You will start receiving emails from that representative um, and they'll ask you a little more information. They'll need to get information like uh, your funding, uh, your bank, you know, where, where it would be funded to. Uh, they they are it. doing a direct deposit straight into bank accounts. Okay. And do you have any sense for how long that takes? So from the moment you, you, you go online, fill out the paperwork to the money in your bank account, what's, what's the duration? Um, and if you don't have those details, that's fine. I'm just curious. Yeah, it, 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 it ranges. Um, it, it has taken people anywhere from uh, a week up to two months. Um, you know, I, I was talking with someone this morning that she actually, uh, the day that the, the website opened up, she applied for the EIDL loan. And she just received her um, funding last week. So, got it. It, 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 it. Again, the SBA is trying to be uh, very careful on they, when they assess risk. They look at your industry. Is this what one that we would consider to be a risky business and, and we should get funding up quickly? Or can we wait a little bit? Um, restaurants, I've had clients that are restaurants, uh, clients that were in lawn care, uh, clients that own uh, Greyhound bus stations, uh, 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 franchises, those received funding very quickly and received the max amount of funding very quickly because the, the government wanted to keep the entities in business. Got it. Great. Okay. That's really helpful. A any questions that are coming up so far? Tanya, go ahead. Yeah, one. Um, <clears throat> so when they're preparing for these loans, the businesses, um, what kind of paperwork do, should they make sure they have handy? And then what kind of paper trail would you suggest they need to make sure and keep track of um, for later purposes? Okay, so uh, good, good questions. Um, as far as the paperwork on the front end, uh, most banks are asking for financial statements, uh, an income statement, a copy of the tax return. Those are, those are pretty common documents that they're asking for. Um, uh, one bank in particular that I work with um, has worked a lot with small business owners that are just self-employed and they only have a Schedule C. And so they have asked for copies of those Schedule Cs for 2019. They've even worked with people who haven't completed their tax returns yet and just ask for a draft. You know, give us a draft of what your Schedule C, you think what it will look like. Uh, and they use that for their loan file. 
um, as far as uh, what to do once you've received your funding, I've been recommending uh, that my clients go and set up a new checking account uh, to put that money in uh, and to make sure that that money is used just for the, the qualifying expenses like payroll, rent, those kind of things. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're cutting those. Uh, they may be cutting the payroll out of their normal operating account, but then they transfer money from their uh, SBA, uh, from the PPP money in, into their operating account to fund it. Okay. And then I had another question. You had mentioned um, like uh, businesses that maybe like you that only have one employee and maybe they don't technically like pay themselves, you know, out of the payroll. How should they uh, do that for these purposes? Yeah, that's good. I, I actually had that question myself. Um, and I, I reached out to my, uh, my, the banker that I use quite frequently in these situations because he has been dealing a lot with those individuals. And he said what they're looking for is a, 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 a check being cut from the, you know, you know, let's say I'm a plumber and I've got my own small business and I have my checking account where my, my money comes in. Uh, they they want to see you writing a check from your business account to your personal account. What they don't want to see is, uh, yeah, I'm going to pay my uh, lease on my personal truck or something. You know, I'm going to pay my home mortgage out of my business account directly and just call it a a you know a owner draw for my business. No, they they actually want to see you writing the money from the business account to the personal account. Thank you. Yeah. Great, Great question, Sonia. Melissa, anything then Herman? As those questions are coming in, uh, Justin, maybe let me let me go to the other the so Let's just pick the scenario. I know many of our small business owners, they're one, two, three person shops. So great place for them to start again. Just to, I'm gonna, we're going to highlight the, the grant opportunities, the loan advance program. Go to the SBA site, get your application started. We're going to send out the link to you so you can click on it. And, and just to recap, Justin, what you're suggesting is as much as possible, separate out the money that you're getting as part of these loans and grants so you can keep a very tight record of how you're using those funds. Many of these loans need to be utilized for payroll purposes or specific types of expenses. So as long as at the end of the day, you can show here's, I've got $10,000 and here's where I applied those $10,000 and demonstrate that back to the SBA as part of the forgiveness grant application, um, you should be able to check that off. Did I, did I capture that correctly, Justin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, I, so now okay. let's go, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. Gonna, one thing I hadn't really touched on much was um, related to the PPP program, the uh, loan forgiveness part of that. There is an application. Uh, I've been seeing different versions of drafts of how that's going to look. Because if you apply and get the PPP program, and it fund you know it is funded. Uh, you will have to apply to the SBA to have that forgiven. Um, again, I, I've seen multiple drafts now of how that is going to look. Um, I would just caution anyone out there if you're if you've already seen some, don't 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 stick too close to it. I guess don't don't think it's going to look exact because I I had a new client call me. He said I want you to look at this. This is what this this form looks like. And they've changed some of the verbiage, and now I think I'm not. Some of my expenses aren't going to qualify, and now part of my loans aren't going to be forgiven. And I wasn't expecting that, and uh, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, this is all changing. Every day there's something changing. Uh, what it what it says today is not what it's going to say next week, most likely, until until they finalize something. So just you know, don't get too uh, caught up in it. Just wait to see what the final regs. Uh, come out to say. Yeah. Uh, in addition, I, I would say that um, most of these PPP loans, whatever portion is not forgiven by the SBA, uh, generally will be a small portion. Those interest rates, I believe, were were maxed out at one percent. Like that's what. So you have two years to pay that remaining balance off at a max of one percent interest. So you know, it, it, hopefully, it won't. Be, you know, it's it's almost free money. Got it. Beautiful. Okay, so let's, I want to really simplify this conversation for folks. You know, 
I'm a one per use the example of a plumber. So let's talk about a plumber. I don't use payroll. I get bunch, you know, I make money for my clients. It sits in my checking account. And let's assume at least that they have a separate business checking account. If you're in that scenario, what I'm hearing you say is you do qualify for the PPP loan slash grant opportunity, right? Don't think that you do not qualify. Um, and then based on some rough math that I've heard some banks talk about is that for every employee, you can approximately get anywhere from 17, 18, $19,000. That's sort of the number that I've, I've heard. Does that sound roughly right, Justin? Maybe that number uh, fluctuates I mean, the, dramatically. On, yeah, I, I would say to, to make the math easy, uh, let's say you do 100, uh, you know, uh, regarding the PPP program, let's say your annual expenses uh, on your, your uh, payroll run $120,000, right? Uh, or, or in this case, with the plumber who's self-employed, he makes $120,000 a year in his business, right? Well, that's going to be $10,000 a month they're going to loan you $25,000, right? Two and a half times that, 10, that, that monthly income number. Uh, so so you, you would have access to $25,000. I, I, I literally, I had a client, I helped out, I guess it was about a month ago. Um, and he, he actually ran a uh, small little construction business. He had about $10,000 a month in, in labor costs to his guys that he paid out. Uh, and he didn't think he qualified. I'm not sure why he thought he didn't, but he, he in his own mind, he thought he didn't. We talked um, and he got a check for 25 grand uh, from the bank, which he's used now to, to pay his guys and supplement their income. So uh, Very uh, cool. that answers your question or not, but, but, uh, but that's the way they calculate it. Yeah. So. Good. Well, and I, I do want to make one sort of legal note here, which is uh, this is a, a high level educational information session. Uh, we're so lucky to have Justin with us sharing some of these thoughts for the specific details of every loan. You should speak to either your CPA, your banker. We just want to make sure that, uh, their misinformation is not preventing you from accessing dollars that are being set aside very specifically for our small business owners. Um, and, and, and like Justin, I myself am also a small business owner and, and as I've gone through some of the PPP loan processes, I've been shocked at how easy it has been. Um, and it's really with that revelation that we wanted to make sure that we're setting some of these conversations so others who may be misinformed, not realize that there are some support opportunities for them that you're actually pursuing them. So for the PPP loans, um, you do need to go talk to a banker. Right? The first grant opportunity was a loan advance program. For that, you need to go to the SBA website and start the application process. For the PPP loan, the other loan slash grant opportunity, you need to start with a bank. Now, there's a lot of banks out there. Um, there's several banks that if you call them, they'll tell you they are no longer processing PPP loan, uh, loans. Do not be dissuaded. There are banks out there that are processing the PPP loans. It doesn't cost you anything to work with a bank, um, but you do need to find a bank that's processing. As a matter of fact, when those conversations wrapped up, we have a very short list of banks um, that we do know are still taking loan applications. We'll be happy to post that link on the, um, on the Facebook site so you can, you can refer to that. And, and, and certainly the chamber members for your respective communities, please feel free to identify any other banks locally that are still processing PPP loans. Um, Justin, all that sounds right. I don't want to misspeak to any of these pieces. Does that, am I right so far? But, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Yes. Uh, Go ahead, Justin, sorry. That, that is, the, the, yes, those, those uh, that's correct. I gotta say, the, the direction you're, you're leading everyone is, is correct. I, I did want to add one more piece um, that I hadn't touched on yet, and that is that don't think that these programs are mutually exclusive of one another, right? If you own a small business, you can go to the SBA website and apply for the EIDL loan. You can apply for the EIDL loan advance. In fact, they're available within the same application on, on the SBA website. Then you can go to your bank and apply for the PPP loan. So you, you can get all the, you know, the only ones I guess I would say might, might be uh, mutually exclusive would be the SBA debt relief program, right? In that case, uh, you already have an SBA loan. 
Um, and, and they're, they're not going to do that relief on your EIDL program that you just got. Um, I will also say on the EIDL loan that you have no payments for 12 months. When you receive your funding on that, that loan, you receive, you have no payments for 12 months. Um, I believe the same is it's the same on the PPP program. And whatever, whatever, you know, you've got eight weeks. It's probably gonna be more than that now to, to pay those costs out and have it forgiven. Whatever pieces remaining, there's a certain amount of time. And I, I want to say it's a year again that you don't have any payments you have to make. Now you do accrue interest, but you have no payments. Got it. Very cool. Um, any other questions that have come up so far? Uh, I do have one that uh, was sent to me. Um, a lot of the talk has been about business, but um, there's been very little mention about nonprofits. Um, do you have any advice for nonprofits and what um, for some of these loans? I believe the nonprofits qualify. Uh, I haven't, honestly, I have not dealt many, with many nonprofits um, uh, regarding these programs. But I believe they qualify because uh, initially on the, the initial application processes, they had asked questions about, you know, your nonprofits, uh, you know, how much of your revenue is related to uh, donations, you know, th those kind of things. Um, I, I would have to, you know, if, if, I if I received a question, a specific question uh, re regarding that, I, I would do a little research and, and, and certainly help out that nonprofit. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tanya. Um, uh, any other chambers, any other questions? Justin, I saw one of the messages that came through on one of the uh, chat lines was that the deadline for the PPP loan is June 30th. Can you, are you aware of that? Is that an accurate? Uh, yes, okay. originally, originally the, the deadline was uh, June 30th to apply for your, your PPP loans. Uh, and generally, they can get them funded within, you know, if you, if, you know, I guess you would be somewhat time crunched because it takes about a week, you know, five business days uh, to get funding. Some of them have been, have been faster, um, but on average, they were taking about a week for people to get funded on that PPP program. Um, now, I will say on the EIDL loan, there was about a month span there that the EIDL loan program closed down to anyone but agricultural businesses. So farms, if you own a farm, uh, during that time period, you could apply for the EIDL loan, but no one else could. Uh, Monday, they opened that back up. On the 15th, they opened it back up to all businesses, including agricultural businesses. Great, wonderful. So we are going to have another conversation on this, hopefully tomorrow, we're just, we're scrambling because there's an urgency. We have in essence 12 business days before the PPP loans close. Um, and one of our, uh, one of our research uh, elements that we found was that in Missouri, we have roughly eight, eight and a half, 8 8.3% of our small businesses, of our businesses have actually taken advantage of the PPP loan. So that number is very low. And we still have about 130 billion with a B dollars left in the PPP loan application. So, you know, really can't implore this enough. If you're a small business owner that's struggling, trying to figure out how to make the, you know, uh, make the dots connect and make payroll and keep your employees um, uh, sustained, please do speak to a banker. And uh, uh, as soon as we wrap up here, we'll send you some information about potential banks We'll send Justin's information on the, on the chat threads. So feel free to contact any of the folks identified. We hope that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of turbulence in uh, all of your lives right now, our lives right now. Hopefully this is uh, just a little bit of a soothing bomb that can, that can help to some extent. Um, those were all the questions we had. Uh, Justin, anything else that we should be highlighting before we wrap up today's conversation? Uh, just, just one more thing I, I thought of, I, I helped a few clients. Um, they were actually, uh, hairdressers and one was a chef and based on, they were, they were all self-employed based on their income levels. Uh, it actually made more sense for them to go on unemployment and basically, uh, be a self-employed person on unemployment. Uh, 
than it was to go through the, the PPP loan program. So again, I, I would highly, and, and they wouldn't have known that otherwise. They were going to go apply for the PPP program. They, they, they reached out to me and we figured out, hey, it made more sense to go on unemployment. Um, so I would just highly, highly recommend reach out to that trust advisor. Have them, you know, if, if they're not taking the time to sit down with you and figure out what is your best program, then maybe you need to look somewhere else. So. Okay. So if, some, if a bank is telling you the money is gone, it's not there, you don't qualify. I, I, it, one of the big things I'm hearing is certainly challenge that, that, that feedback you're getting. Uh, it's, it's certainly possible that there are businesses with certain unique circumstances that don't qualify. But just given the amount of misinformation, even with potential bankers and financial advisors, um, don't take some of that feedback on the face value and certainly sort of at least get second or third opinion just to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Very cool. Justin, thank you so much for your feedback. This is helpful. We, we hope to move those numbers up in Missouri from 8.3 to maybe 10%, 11% and help some of our small businesses along the way help uh, businesses retain employees uh, and then sort of sustain themselves through this tough period. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, please feel free to continue to uh, uh, let your local chambers of commerce know. You have amazing representation and leadership in your local chambers uh, and all the chambers are connected with a broader conversation that's uh, happening at a regional level. So however we can be of help to you, uh, we want to do that. Um, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Justin, for your time. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Be healthy, be safe, and we will, we will hopefully see many of you tomorrow as we get into this conversation, not from the lens of a banker. So, so thank you. Take care.